So hi, everybody. Thank you for having us. Um, we are excited to share with you all um, what we've been doing. And we've been doing this since like 20, I designed the course in 2017. Um, and so we've been having a ball. It's really unfortunate that politicians and news outlets don't highlight uh, the good things or the things that go well. So we are excited to be here to do that. Okay, so this is my family. Um, as you can see, we are a multi-ethnic family. And so um, that really has um, influenced, of course, my, my strategy um, for how I design courses and how I talk about race and anti-racism. Um, and it also, you know, being in a multi-ethnic family means that uh, for me, not only do I have professional experience um, with a doctorate in curriculum and instruction, but I've actually been, I've had hands-on real life practice 24-7 all of the time. So as you can see, we have three girls. And um, if anybody can guess uh, where we are, put it in the chat. <laughs> and if you know one of my stu students, don't you put it in the chat. Okay, and so um, I, I uh, really quickly started an organization called Brownicity. Um, that Brownicity is a made up word. The word brown represents melanin and icity represents um, the word ethnicity. And so it's really, um, we're many hues of one humanity. We're all hues of brown. Um, and again, that speaks to my teaching strategy. I created Brownicity, um, which is an education organization because essentially you know, where does the community go when it needs some education? Um, on race and and needs to be equipped for anti-racism. So like when I was a college student, I took college courses for that. Um, like uh, if you are maybe a teacher or professional, you may get professional development um, through your, um, um, your corporation or your institution. Um, but, you know, at this, at this point, when I created Brownicity, um, I'm a, I was a mom um, and I wasn't connected to an institution and there were a ton of us who needed education. And so I created um, brownicity.com. And if you go there and click on learn, um, you'll see um, that we have over 22 courses, um, courses that give you a fundamental understanding that builds your capacity to be able to do this work, like news media literacy. We have things for um, families to grow cultural competency, like global glory chasers. Um, so yeah, we just have, Again, we exist to meet the needs of the mainstream community who need support through education and well-designed education. And so, um, yes, we, uh, let me make this smaller so I can see it. Uh, yes, so um, we, in terms of our enrollment and our courses that are on demand, and then sometimes live, you know, we have over 15,000. Um, and then in terms of workshops and um, keynotes and podcasts and all kinds of things that we customize and develop. I mean, we've been able to reach thousands and thousands uh, of people in the community. And we've been able to bring communities together by giving them mutual understanding and helping them learn together. Oh, and those are uh, the books that I have published. The first one is um, a study guide. Um, the second one is a children's activity book designed to build children's capacity to be able to um, not be colorblind. <laughs> um, and then Teaching for Justice and Belonging, um, um, I wrote with a professor of education at UNC Charlotte. All books you should have. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to get this to work. It is not going. Oh, there. Okay, so about the course, um, like I said, I designed it actually along with high school students. Um, it was a leadership sem seminar, so um, we designed it, and it has a basic five-unit framework. Um, you will see here there's um, some of the images that I have during this slide show are uh, just pictures that I've taken from my classroom and posters um, and things, scenes um, from the classroom. Um, our approach um, is really to offer what it's what we all have been deprived of, um, but more specifically, of course, um, um, young people. So racial literacy and cultural competency. So of course, if you don't grow up in a home where you know adults are having these conversations competently and confidently, um, as a student, of course, you don't have 
this capacity. And so you don't have competency or literacy yourself and neither do you have confidence. The cool thing about teenagers and kids is that they are willing to ask and be curious out loud. So for example, because it's an elective, the kids who enroll in the course have questions like they signed up for the course because they want to know and so that's that's a plus um essentially i tell them that i am not i, I basically i'm not trying to tell them what to think but i am helping them connect dots and so i say um you know how when you when you I don't know if they still do this. I know we did this growing up where you follow the numbers and you connect the dots to draw a picture. And so, um, you know, if like, if some of the numbers are missing, um, are you able to draw a clear picture? I mean, so essentially I get to show them, um, yeah, honest history facts, like it's all been written down. So fortunately um, in our history, um, all of the racism was written down. So it's not like I have to make it up or, <laughs> Uh, shifted or falsely, you know, uh, interpreted. It's like all right there. And so I, I pointed out here are the things. Um, they get a fundamental understanding. And again, um, they build their capacity for critical thinking and problem solving. If you cannot prob solve a problem that you cannot see, you can't heal what has not been revealed. Um, and so yeah, essentially they're getting an analytical framework, um, historical, political, and social context, um, a sound knowledge base, practical understanding um, for, for both like what's happening interpersonally and systemically. Um, and then of course, in you know, because they're being equipped in the space of a classroom, um, they are essentially leaders when they walk out of the classroom. So they're they are the ones who know or the ones who are in the know in their sphere, spheres of influence. And so I often hear from other teachers about how a student came into their classroom and they connected those dots and then they shared something that they learned from the course. Okay, um, assignments really, you know, the the topic and a lot of a lot of what they learn can be um, you know, shocking, <laughs> a little, a little heavy, a little disappointing. Um, and so uh, the assignments are experiential and interactive. Um, you know, they need to engage in listening. Like they don't, they don't get like homework. Um, all of the processing um, and hard work is done right there in, in the class in real time. Um, they have guided group discussions. Um, and then of course they can explore um, topics individually. So if they're more interested in banking are more interested in um, um, like uh, um, identity development. So, um, you know, they they have the liberty to uh, do deeper dives um, wh where they want to. Okay, and this is just a picture of, uh, <laughs> of them completing this timeline. This is kind of a, you know, a, a famous image in our class um, because we share a classroom uh, with other um, courses, it's awesome to have this in the classroom. Um, but just just because visually it tells a story without me having to say anything, you know. And so right away, students know. Oh wait, um, we have been in this function <laughs> um, or in this problem a lot longer than we have not. And so then throughout the year, we go in and we fill in on the timeline. Um, it also speaks to how we learn history. Um, so for example. We think that we are, we are often taught that um, American slavery slavery um, happened a really long time ago, which is not true. Um, the it it started a long time ago, but um, it it actually uh, didn't end <laughs> not too long ago. And then we had a time um, of uh, disenfranchisement and all kinds of subjugation after that. And so we just get to take the whole school year and just unpack all of that and process it. <laughs> Come on, go there. Oops, it went to. Okay, so um, what is important for, for me, of course, as an educator and, and as a teacher is to make sure that our space is psychologically um, safe 
um, so that students can bravely learn. So we spend, I know, maybe about two to three, maybe even four weeks at the beginning of the semester, um, setting the tone uh, for the course, making sure that we're postured in curiosity, um, not judgment. And like I said, because it's an elective, I mean, the students are already postured <laughs> um, in curiosity. They're already curious and not judgmental. Um, sometimes they can be a little judgmental about the people who are not taking the class, but we work on that too. We work, we work on that too. Um, it's a very relaxed atmosphere. We do laugh a lot. Um, we, we have lots of artists and guests, um, come our quizzes are actually games so that we're learning, um, you know, collectively. Um, and then they can, like I said, engage in personal projects. All right. And so, um, like I said, it's basically five units that we expand on. And so, yes, they're learning, um, yeah, what is race, what it actually is as a mechanism, um, what is racism, um, the cost of racism. Um, they learn to do um, an analysis, of, um, like a power analysis of structure. Um, and then, and then we bring it back to ourselves because we exist within these structures. So how has this impacted our, um, how has it wired our brain and our beliefs? And then I use, um, yeah, essentially, you know, th this is how we, this is how we unpack this. And so they get context by learning history. And so they, they learn a, a ton of history. Um, I might even have one student tell me that yeah, she learned more history on, oh my gosh, I forget which unit we were on, immigration. She learned more history on immigration in this course um, than she did in her AP history course. Um, then um, they learned uh, they learned about narratives, which is how you know stories get passed along. Um, we uncover policies and they understand how policies play a massive role in um um, kind of creating and contributing to the way things are, of course. And, you know, often I think that's mind blowing because people think, most people just think that racism is, you know, um, treating somebody badly based on their skin color. And so, yeah, when they come in the classroom with that mindset or with that narrative, then they are just blown away <laughs> that that's not what racism is or race, racism is so much more than that. And then of course, again, structural analysis and then brain bias. So through the structural analysis and, and then brain bias, those are the kind of analyses where they get a they get a critical lens or they develop that critical lens. They learn how to look at um, race critically. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I wanted to show y'all that was, sorry, let me go back. Um, so here they are painting. And I love how our teacher um, has, is white uh, with blonde hair and blue eyes. And she is the teacher who teaches all of the students how to um, make their unique skin tone from brown. So she teaches them how to mix those tone, those colors, those primary colors to make a base brown. And then from there, each student then learns how to make their own skin tone. And so of course she's, you know, making a point, um, but I love that she just um, is so very light skinned <laughs> and then she's the one who's teaching how to make your skin tone from base brown. We have a good, we have a good time. Okay, um, see, these are some of the topics we cover. So I'll just let you look at those instead of me reading them. But yeah, mitochondrial DNA, eugenics, um, frames and messaging, um, Native American assimilation and removal, reconstruction, immigration, GI Bill, redlining the wealth gap. So those are some of our topics. Oh, and though the, then you see a picture of uh, all of our banned books. That that's our library. Probably most of those books are banned. <laughs> I want to now let you hear from the, from the students. Why don't we let Emerson go first? And Emerson, um, you can tell us uh, where you are, um, which is pretty cool. I'm so proud of you. My name is Emerson. I took the class last year. Can you tell us a little bit about how the course? impacted you a good word that i would use to describe my whole experience is like equipped i'm even taking a course this year um that is supposed to be like a 200 300 level course and it's um a black history course about um 
like America and voting and how black people were got to the vote through um, US history. And it's crazy how much context I feel like I have for this class already. Like I feel like I came into the class already knowing a lot of things that she's talking about. And not that the goal is to know everything already, but I just feel really well prepared. I feel like I know how to have good discussions and um, I have good context for it. And so I feel like it just really prepared me to continue and to keep taking these types of classes. So Reagan, do you want to talk about the impact of the course? What really stood out to me about the course is that I really felt like it, like I grew a lot as kind of a person. I remember in the beginning of the school year, Dr. Barry mentioned how race was a social construct. I remember at first I was like, like, no way, like that, like no way. But as the course went on, I really learned that it was it was something that was created to kind of divide us. It was a political tool. And I kind of just learned how I would, I would be able to talk to other people about like approaching the subject of race. And I think I really just was able to confront my own racial biases that I didn't even know that I had. And I was able to kind of work through those. And I feel a lot more, I feel empowered kind of through this knowledge now. Wow, thank you, Reagan. How about you, Wes? One thing I like that Reagan said was I was also confused when on like the first day you were like, race is like a construct. But um, over I liked how later in the course you really explained how race and racism like came about and how a lot of it is affecting like the pol like government and politics. And I'm really grateful that I took the course because I can apply the base knowledge that I gained to other history classes. James, you want to say something? I'm saving mm -hmm. the last one. <laughs> um, I think that, well, I, I grew up in a multi-ethnic household as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that the course has provided me a lot of context that not only I can apply to my personal life, but also literally everything else in my life, in my in my learning, in my uh, social groups, in everything. And I, I think it's a really, really useful tool that I hope that everyone has the opportunity to have someday. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, and then how about you, Sinclair? You want to speak in over? Um, uh, well, I guess since she's my mom, I kind of always grew up kind of like kind of having a base understanding. And then when I took the class on the first day, it was kind of humbling because I came in and like I was asked all these questions that I that I never even thought before. Like people would ask me questions and I'd be like, I have no idea. And it gave me confidence to take more difficult history classes and mm -hmm. I can be in these history classes and like have like an underground knowledge that we don't really talk about that much in normal history classes that is really nice to have. Does anybody have questions that you want to ask um, the students? I did see a question that says, has there been any pushback? People want to know mm -hmm. how you got the district to allow it. Here's the magic. So this is at a charter school and it's at a charter school that wanted um, wanted this very, you know, so the teachers were already, um, I want to say in 2016, um, like so many places, um, you know, people realized that they didn't have the capacity and the understanding to be able to handle or address a lot of the social issues that that election, that that 2016 election brought to the surface. Um, and so um, they asked uh, me um, and my organization to come um, kind of give this fundamental, kind of what I teach the students, I taught um, this the staff first. And so the staff was, you know, got to have, a, you know, it's like a mutual understanding. So you don't have to be afraid to have the, the conversations or afraid to um, try to problem solve. And so it was, yeah, it was really, really the leadership of the school. And then a part of that um, was, they asked, could you then develop a course for the high school students? And so here's a here's a formula, a formula for everybody. So the staff was educated, um, or the staff was exposed and got some awareness. And then we held courses also for parents. So I think we did like a Sunday course for parents who worked, and then we did a um during the day course for parents who could come to during the day. So the staff and the parents were able to get the same um again, education, equip. Uh, equip 
management, <laughs> mutual understanding tools so you can communicate. And then we developed the course for the high school students. So you kind of have a number of people um, moving forward um, um, together. And so there hasn't been pushback from the school. Um, the I and the course um, have been supported, um, but yes, Moms of Liberty um, did uh, post some stuff <laughs> about about me and my organization. It was all lies. So, <laughs> and, and because our school, our administrators and our staff were already equipped, um, the that organization wasn't able to kind of penetrate our school um, and make problems like they have done in other schools. So mm -hmm. our staff shut it down. Do the students go out and actually help uh, spread the word of the things they learn in the courses? That's what I'd like to know. I've had a lot of like good conversations with some relatives. Um, I have a lot of family that live in the South or have, I don't know, very much like, uh, I don't know, say a lot of maybe like racist things, say a lot of like, uh, I don't know, just not great things sometimes. And it was kind of, I feel like with this class, I was able to have the tools to kind of have those conversations without, I think, making them feel attacked. And kind of, I felt like we were able to get somewhere with these conversations instead of it being shut down immediately. And so that was really helpful. So someone had asked about, uh, has it led to interesting discussions at home over dinner and et cetera? Does anybody want to answer that one? Yeah, I was going to say, I just saw that in the chat. I thought that was a good question. Um, I feel like both questions I would sort of have a similar answer to. Um, I definitely feel like um, it led to interesting discussions for me personally. I mean, at home, of course, but I think that like, I just felt like I was really able to go and have like a well-rounded discussion, having the context and having the confidence in myself, like, like we were saying that ability to just be able to like have a conversation, whether that's with somebody that had the same perspective of me or was completely opposing me. I just felt more confident in my ability and the context and the historical context that I had. Um, and so I definitely had good discussions outside of class, um, more than just with people at my dinner table, with um, new people that I met all the time, with people that I had already known. And I felt like I was just really like equipped and confident in myself to have those ongoing conversations. So like for sure, not that that was something that was necessarily included in the curriculum or required of us, but I just felt like that was something that I wanted to do and that I felt excited about doing. So yeah. I applied a lot of what I learned in class to other classes and I, th I kind of mentioned this a little before, but it, it helped me um, deepen and strengthen a lot of my contextual uh, understanding of a lot of things. And um, it did open up a lot of conversations with my family because I'd, I'd love to come home and just rant to them about what I've learned today. I'd be like, oh my God, mom, did you know this? Blah, 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 blah. Um, so my family definitely <laughs> probably lear learned about half of the course. <laughs> um, but I, I think that it's, um, it definitely does pave the way to a lot of other conversations. Um, and it, it develops critical thinking skills and like connecting a lot of different subjects together. So I think that's a super, super important tool. And I will say, yeah, I have, I get approached all the time at like at the grocery store, at the football game, you know, out and about by a parent or a grandparent who you know, who has a child or grandchild in the course. And so then they share something that they learned or some things that they're learning from their child, child or grandchild. I feel like last last year, Dr. Berry had two classes and they were like back to back. And I was in the later class. And I remember some days going in there and seeing some of my friends walk out of the class and they're like, oh my gosh, Wesley, this is crazy. We have to talk about this later. And so we get out and we're obviously like talking about it in the hallway and then in other classes. And even if we're talking about things that might not, people might not think have a lot of impact, it might bring up a deeper discussion later on. And so I think that's helpful to um, spread some knowledge both like in school and also with like the people in your family outside of school. This is really so awesome. I'm an HR director during the day. 
And, you know, it would be lovely to have these, this kind of information, even for my staff, you know, um, but the next question that someone I wanted to ask for the students is, has the knowledge that you've gained helped you to challenge the system? And if so, how? And like beyond conversations, have any of you done some activism with the information that you have learned? Towards the very end of the year, we um, got a sheet that, I can't remember exactly what it says, it's somewhere around here, but um, it pretty much listed, um, a bunch of different races and you would pick the one that you that you are and then it had levels or like steps oh, yeah. of like growing and we were tasked to like read that over and identify where we were and so I personally have not done anything other than like conversations with the people around me but if I keep following that chart, then I can, I think we could all make some differences. So Wes is referring to uh, racial identity development, um, which offers a model um, of stages um, that shows, that helps us see that we're growing, like we're not stuck in any particular, like at any particular place in our racial identity development. And so it, it helps people see that like, like growth is important is is happening or can happen and so now um there have been students that they the, with the exception of emerson so this group is still pretty young right so james is a sophomore emerson you're old <laughs> james is a sophomore the others are juniors and <laughs> emerson is but in terms of advocacy um um they have they they have been in all kinds of ways they probably just can't put their finger on it but uh, but there have been other students who have been away from the course longer mm -hmm. and so then they've been involved in some things and so you know they're still in school um and just took the course um last year um and so their advocacy looks more like um yes uh, educating their siblings or educating adults um or their activism i should say um is is bringing awareness and inviting people um on a learning journey uh, but then the students who have been um, away from the course, you know, maybe they they graduated a few years ago, then yes, they've been involved in producing, like one student is producing music um, to help educate. Um, I feel like I could speak to this question a little bit. Um, I obviously just graduated last year, um, but um, for the question about has this course helped you decide what you wanna do when you're older and the question about like challenging the system, um, I think that a good key point for me is that like this class and this type of education has made me realize that with what I want to do in the future, which I currently have no idea about, I know that a route for me is social justice and anti-racism and activism. So no matter where I decide to go or what path I decide to take, um, that for me, like with picking my classes, with deciding what to research in my free time, I know that that's something that's really important to me. And that's one of my big things that if I end up in multiple different kinds of fields that has to be a key factor for me um, obviously there's things that we would do outside of class there had been protests that I've been to individually um, and demonstrations and stuff like that but I think something really big as far as like activism and continuing to challenge the system is deciding like where I want to put all my power in and I think that these classes and this course specifically like gave me a really good baseline for that. So that's something that I would say on that. Um, someone asked uh, you, Dr. Barry, um, do you have a course that you teach for adults in professional settings? Yes, I do. Um, so I so I teach this same course, but just in different containers. So the students are fortunate enough that they get a whole year um, or school year of unpacking. And, you know, we have, we have class twice a week for 45 minutes. And so that really works best. It's kind of like learning a foreign language. You know, you just, you get to practice, you get to, <laughs> over a longer period of time. Um, adults typically don't have that um, kind of time. And so, um, yes, I, I, on our website, we have a course called Foundations and it's essentially the same content, um, but it's just packaged. Um, I think it's packaged. I think it's packaged. It's packaged in maybe eight or nine modules or lessons. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have a, um, you know, a workbook to work through, um, but it's the same, same content, but you know, it's 
for an adult. So you could, I mean, some adults do it and they take a long time to go through it, which is, that's totally fine. Um, Cause slow growth is good growth. <laughs> um, and then some people, some people, you know, get it done in a couple of months or, you know, whatever fits their schedule. So that's called uh, foundations. And then for faith communities, it's called um, what lies between us, because that, that was the first one I did. What mm-hmm. lies between us with the play on the word lies, because it's all lies. Mm-hmm. And then um, as I was invited into schools and corporate spaces, I did, um, I did foundations. So hey, your daughter's been quiet over there. I'm going to pick on her for a minute. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> So you're you were kind of quiet in uh, when folks were answering like how this has kind of like impact different things that they've done. So would you like to share? Sure. I like what Wesley said. It's I would go outside the classroom and mm-hmm. find out how many like actual things people don't know that we talk about <laughs> so much in the class. Like me and Wes would go on a rant at lunch and our friends would be like, what are you talking about? And, and I just find so much joy explaining it to them. Like feeling like knowing all these things and being able to explain it to people and have all this knowledge and be like in the know is, is really interesting. And I really like to spread that word so more people can know and spread the word about the class. This is really, really cool, the way that th- that they're doing this, just so organically as well. We pride ourselves on relational organizing, and basically that's what these kids are doing with your class. <laughs> they're going out and sharing with their friends and their family, which is what we encourage the adults to do, um, mm-hmm. except for this is a different subject matter, of course. But this is really great. I love it. What would you say to people who talk about reverse racism? Do you talk about that in the, in the class? We do, but it's, yeah, but it's like, once you understand what racism actually is there, you can't talk about reverse racism. It just doesn't make sense. You know, reverse racism, of course, is based on, of course, a a very superficial, uninformed, um, oversimplified misunderstanding of what racism is. Mm -hmm. Um, And and so it doesn't take into account the power dynamics of race um, and how race and racism work. So the question that um, that I, that someone has put in here is how do you mm-hmm. um, how do you get public school districts to kind of even think about this kind of curriculum? You know, wh- what are th- some things that folks can do? Because I know that you know everywhere people are fighting these Moms for Liberty folks and. You know, we know that this type of curriculum and this type of knowledge actually makes corporations better. It makes schools Mm -hmm. better. It makes kids safer, all of those things. So how do we, you know, how do we promote this? There is no uh, like formula that I am aware of. Mm -hmm. Um, Like we have been kind, like we have worked with districts before, but it's because the leaders in those districts wanted this. So I would imagine that so much is about the relational aspect. Um, People who have worked um, with my organization, yeah, that's, I mean, that's how we get into places and spaces. But I will say most of the schools that reach out um, Mm -hmm. to work with us or to work with me have that autonomy, like a charter school um, or a private school. So I would, I always, you know, go back to, we, we do, we do, we can get through things done outside of our institutions. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know it's not ideal. I um, mean, but parents can get together and um, and have a, you know, and just create a study group, like, a, you know, how we have play dates and <laughs> things like that. Um, and, you know, I just think about how I grew up. Um, I grew up not learning any kind of, well, let me say this, not learning fully honest history in school, but I would come home and share with my parents and then they would amend it. <laughs> like, oh, okay, let's let's give you, you know, some more <laughs> history. Let's get, and so, uh, you know, I just think about how homes or spaces um, mm-hmm. that, that can be learning spaces for more than just, you know, the children that live there. Um, the first time I taught, uh, like this course to a group of adults, it was in a home. A mom said, hey, I'm bringing 30 of my neighbors into my home. Come here and teach us. And so mm-hmm. I taught the neighborhood. And so we have to get creative 
um, like that. Um, because right now, um, yeah, the institution is just too much, you know, bureaucratic mess. And <laughs> yeah, what you don't want to do is you know, you just, you don't want to be fighting like the wrong fight, putting your energy towards that when mm -hmm. really you can just, let's have an after school program or let's um, have a community gathering. Um, there's other ways. Um, students, do you all have some ideas? I was going to say in response to the first um, sort of question about like reverse racism and then on top of a point you mentioned it is just like so fun and so like filling fulfilling to like take a history class that is accurate and like you were saying all of the pieces just fall together so like we don't I didn't even it wasn't even a thought in my head to like have a dispute about whether or not reverse racism was real because we were literally equipped with the history and had that understanding and the knowledge and it, it was just it was so refreshing to like be in that type of class um and so, yeah, like, even if I would, like, have to go out and have conversations with other people about it, like, it, it just felt really good knowing that, like, we had already had that context and really seeing how all of these misconceptions and things that are controversies, like, fall into place for us. So, like, even on top of, like, learning things at home, like, I feel like that was just a really, a really good factor for me. So what resources would you recommend for those of us here on the call that want to increase their knowledge and understand, understanding? I, of course, I'm going to say my organization, um, because we are, um, you know, we are parents and educators. And so um, I put some books here, um, online courses. I have, oh, but the numbers went away. Sorry, it's just one long list, but I, I'll just tell you. So there's um, books, um, online courses. Um, I have, um, foundations, teaching for justice. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of the, to me, the, the content, the, the, the solid content and helpful content that is nurturing is typically education or teacher centered. So I like the organizations um, like teaching for justice, um, UNC Charlotte. So UNC Charlotte has an online um, anti-racism graduate certificate program completely online. Like if you are, you know, uh, like an HR person and you want to get a certificate, um, they have that. Um, it, there's Embrace Race, um, which is, you know, more so for parents. Um, Checkology, I love Checkology because that helps um, build um, media literacy. And so that's, um, you know, a skill that adults, like we are really having to develop um, a critical lens uh, more now so than we ever had to growing up. And then of course our, our kids, our students um, will have, are doing that a different way because of the type of media that they are exposed to. So I like Czechology for that to, to build those muscles and that awareness. Um, then of course I have my own organization. Um, it's always great to try to engage in um, local workshops and communities and plug in there um, so you are not isolated and alone. Um, uh, but for workshops, I see I have also Undoing Racism. I think that's a national um, organization and they do, um, sorry, the organization is the, the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond, but they do a kind of a famous workshop called Undoing Racism. Like we do cor courses. So that's what's on Brownicity. And then there is, a uh, we are, which is working to extend anti-racism education. Um, my most favorite hands down documentary is Race, the Power of an Illusion. Like you will never ever, <laughs> you if you are ever learning from me, you have to watch that documentary, right? <laughs> you have to watch it. And because it's three hours, it takes us a long time to get through because we only watch 15 minutes at a time in the class, but you have to watch that documentary. So if you don't do anything else, watch that documentary, Race, the Power of an Illusion uh, by California Newsreel. It's older, it's so well done. And then of course you have like on Netflix is the 13th. And then there's podcasts like Code Switch and Teaching Wild White. So I just threw that in the list there. Someone said the topic title for the presentation speaks to why extremists fear anti-racism education and why we all need it. 
So they said, can you speak to that a little bit? Because when we have, and the students have talked about this, um, when you have competence um, and you have confidence, then you get to engage in the problem solving. So mm -hmm. if you don't have, um, if you don't, you know, if you can't connect all the dots, you don't have all the pieces, um, then yes, you're more likely to, again, be manipulated by the fear mongers. And so, mm -hmm. this, you know, I tell the students halfway through the school year, I'm like, you all already know <laughs> more than most adults. And like they have said, you're not, when you have understanding, you're not combative. Um, you know, when you have understanding, you can strategize, um, you can um, map out and how you want to be a part of helping to create a better world or how you want to be a part of solving the problem. And you definitely won't be um, actively, unknowingly perpetuating um, the problem. And so, you know, race was invented to divide us and mm -hmm. divide and conquer. And so if we all have this anti-racism education, um, you know, then we get rid of the false division that um, determines how we how we live and and govern ourselves. Someone asked, "What are three core values of anti-racism education curriculums that you would personally amplify?" Uh, there's lots of core values of anti-racism education, um, but I asked, you know, I'm like, "Oh, what are what are these top three? Is it that did not come to everybody? Sorry, <laughs> damn, because I didn't hit send. There you go. <laughs> There we go. So yeah, equity, ensuring that all students have access to the same opportunities and resources, regardless of their racial background. And so someone may think, well, of course, like if we're all in the same school together or whatever, then they're going to have access. But it's it's broader than that because, you know, because of that, our, 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 our race, our history uh, regarding race and how race has, um, determined access and who gets to live where and who gets to have access to what resources um you know anti anti-racism education of course is going to that's going to be at its core like the the issue of equity um and you know because that's the issue we're trying to solve right um then um in inclusivity so creating an environment where every student feels seen, heard, and valued, uh, promoting a diverse range of perspectives um, and experiences. And so, um, you know, an anti-racism education is going to allow us to uh, broaden our perspectives, um, understand that, like, you know, essentially we get to grow our, our cultural competency, um, that there isn't, you know, one way of existing, there isn't one way of looking at history and history isn't just telling uh, one story or one narrative. Um, and then of course, um, critical thinking, encouraging students to analyze and question societal norms and systems to foster a deeper understanding of racism um, and how to combat it. And so I touched on that earlier, like, um, I, you know, I am, I just get excited for them because they have um, a fundamental understanding and you can tell how that touches their confidence. And um, I want that for everybody. Like I, you know, I, I, yeah, I want that for everybody. I, it really breaks my heart when adults want to learn or they want to speak up or they want to be a part of to change. Um, but they are, but the insecurities, um, keep them from engaging. And then I, and I just, and I definitely don't think it's fair. I like, I remember growing up, like here I am, my parents telling me these things. So I know how to navigate our racialized society. And I would think about my white peers, like are their parents telling them, <laughs> you know, these things. Um, and, and when I am teaching adults, the, what I hear the most is that they, you know, they wish they would have known this, mm -hmm. you know, so they'll say, oh, I'm 40 or I'm 50 and I'm just now I'm learning this. Mm -hmm.
No, there's no need to feel bad about that. <laughs> you know, that's by design that you're just not learning it. But also, yeah, see, I think everybody deserves to know and um, and to be able to have informed dialogue and be a part of problem solving. We just have a couple of minutes left. And I just was wondering if the students had anything that they wanted to share. Maybe we didn't touch on a question that you thought we might ask and didn't. Um, just, you know, something because, you know, the whole narrative is, is that teaching um, this curriculum um, makes folks feel bad and, you know, makes them want to take responsibility for things they ought not be doing and all of that ridiculousness, which isn't true. So I would just love to hear from the kids before we um, sign off here about, um, you know, just really whatever they would like to share with us about this. Yeah, I would say that I find it, I find it kind of silly that it's like, this is something that people are like so heated about because I never once felt ashamed. I never once felt bad about myself. Dr. Barry never made me feel like targeted at all. It was always an open conversation and I could ask like really any question I would like I wanted or needed to. And I would never feel like I was being judged. And I didn't, I didn't necessarily feel like I was the problem. I ever felt like we were living I learned that we were living in a society where it was programmed, where we were, we were like, it was just pro like programmed that way. And so I just think, I just wish that there was more kind of education on what anti-racism is really about instead of this propaganda that kind of is being spread. It was a part of the class, like about how people can feel bad about it. So we kind of learned right off the bat that that's not what this course is about. Yeah, I was going to say that I think that that perspective and that misconception doesn't often come from people who have been in um, an anti-racism class. Um, I I just feel like it, it does seem so silly. I absolutely agree with Reagan that like once you're actually in that class, you have that experience. That's just so far from the truth. And I even felt like I could go in and I would often present situations to Dr. Barry and be like, I'm confused about this. I'm conflicted about this. This is happening in my real life. Am I in the wrong? Like, I felt so comfortable in front of all of my peers, in front of Dr. Barry, just to ask whatever I needed to ask, to learn what I needed to learn. And we knew from the get-go that people don't know what they don't know and that that is okay. And that's why you're here to learn and continue. And we were taking the right steps. And so I think that it's just crazy to me that there is that misconception that you're going to go in and feel ashamed and feel responsible and feel blamed. And it's just not like that at all. And I really feel like if people were to go into that type of class with an open mind, that they would just benefit from it so much. I really never felt like there was any type of hostility. So, yeah. Um, I don't think that in the class we spent much time talking about racist people or like different acts of racism as much as we focused on racist policies and how they came about. So I never felt like bad for anything like I did anything um and also an one class that I'll always remember is that we were assigned to take this quiz type thing and um it just asked us questions like click um click good or bad or like sweet or sour or like black black and white as quick as you can and then at the end it gave us a result of what our preferences were and pretty much the entire class said um their scores were like they um um their preference was towards white people and we um after we took it we we learned pretty much that um it's we didn't get that score because that's what we think it's because it's just um, the media we grew up around and um, how that affected us. I also think that the misconception that people feel guilty or bad when they're taking the course also has something to do um, with the ideas that the assumer holds. Like, I think people who assume that about other people probably aren't that open to change or to learn. And it, it definitely can be a scary thing. But when you do it in an environment that is open and that's that doesn't feel judgmental, like Dr. Barry's class, then it's it's definitely a, not, a lot easier. And it's it's you realize how beneficial it is. 
Yeah, I so agree. I think that what Wesley was talking about was the like implicit bias test. I've taken this test so many times at this point and I normally always get the same result, but um, it's so interesting and so cool to me that I could sit in that classroom and be like, I just took this test and I'm a white person and it just told me that I have an automatic or a moderate preference to European Americans. Like it was so fascinating. And I never once sat there and was like, wow, I'm a terrible person because we had that context and we understood that it was from our biases and it was from the way we grew up. And so like even a situation like that, that makes you immediately confront that and is giving you results based on how you reacted, like it was still so fascinating and interesting to me. So I didn't feel like ashamed or anything. So good point. I just cannot thank you kids enough for, for being here and sharing with us. Um, you all are going to make fantastic uh, employees and leaders um, of society for sure, because you have this knowledge that, and you're starting out with um, information that other folks don't have. Um, so that, that's really great uh, that you had the opportunity to take her course and learn from it. And I hope that you all will continue to share as you go along. Um, thank you. Thanks for having us. That's it. That's what we've got for this evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much for coming out and uh, and share and sitting and, and learning with us all. So everybody have a good evening. Thank you so much.